Hi, my name is Madi Tachala and as per the module instructions, uh, today we are looking at the contingency leadership theory, continuum theory, path goal theory, and substitute theory. Um, so the contingency leadership theory um, deals with two things. First of all, trait and behavior. And uh, it also emphasizes that consistency is a key even when situational variables change. So with this affirmation is where we get the downsides in case there is a mismatch. But um, most companies use the contingency leadership theory because um, it helps, especially during empirical research, and it's very predictive. Uh, this uh, contingency leadership theory follows a model of leader, member relations, task structure, position of power, and all these factors are meant to remain stable. In other words, any change of the event does not change the style of the leader. So as you can see these arrows, um, they all work together and then keep all the variables constant. And even if there is something that changes, the leader still maintains his or her style. Next we have uh, the continuum theory. So according to uh, Lisa and uh, Chua, um, Robert Tannabel and Warren Shim Schmidish developed a contingency theory in the 1950s, um, particularly 1958, and it did not come into practice until 1973. So they stated that leadership behavior is on a continuum from boss-centered to the follower. So as you have already seen, their model focuses on who makes the decisions. They also noted that a leader's choice of a leadership pattern or style should be based on the forces in the area or the forces within the situation or the forces in the subordinates. For example, um, if the subordinates are pushing towards a certain decision, the boss might also be flexible and give them some kind of leader liberty to take over. Uh, for example, if um, a boss is trying to come up with a solution to maybe a problem, especially during COVID in uh, education environments, if a boss wants uh, maybe to uh, put up strategies that help students cope with COVID, he or she might consult the teachers and um, he might either share what he thinks before he um, includes them in the decision-making process, or he might just leave the decision to be up to them. So there is sometimes a balance, and other times there is no balance between authority and freedom. But in any case, um, the leader's personality and behavior preferred style are usually based on experience, expectations, values, confidence in the subordinates, and are considered in selecting the style. The subordinates or followers, on the other hand, uh, their leadership is based on personality and behavior. So when a leader decides to give them some kind of freedom, they have to consider their personality or behavior so that at least they can meet the shared goals of the company. So the time available is also another consideration because if the time is short, then um, the leader might assume all authority. 
because he has to make a quick decision and if there is a big time lag he might give them a chance to participate in decision making um, the situation also matters like for example um, where I'm teaching some of the teachers are older and we have a younger principal so um, some of the things uh, or the situations uh, that happen at school she sometimes needs to consult the older teachers in other words she is the principal but she gives them uh, more freedom to make decisions within the organization and then uh, sometimes the situation is affected by climate goals and technology next we have the path called leadership theory um, this is uh, mostly related to leaders and followers and it's also affected by the environment so when leaders and followers come together, the leader has to always evaluate the style. And in this path called leadership theory, um, it's either directive or participative. And in participative, it just uh, relates to how supportive the leader is. The CEO, the CEO, she offers incentives for the followers, and on the followers' side, um, they are usually affected by their characteristics of character, the affiliation that they have with the organization, the system or the structure, and the control. So sometimes when followers have a lot of control and they are being supported sometimes there is behavior satisfaction and the work performance is high and then other times if the leader sets goals that are never met by the followers um, the behavior might change because there is poor performance so it goes either way for both uh, leaders and followers Lastly, we have the leadership substitute theory. Uh, behavior is mostly affected by the situation. And uh, some of the situational factors here, we have job descriptions or the task at hand, the work environment, and the personality. Personality has a big role in the substitute leadership theory. And uh, where uh, things fail, there is need for uh, neutralizers so that the leader's behavior is controlled. Okay, thank you so much. Um, um, these are my references. because it works well for my profession and I would use it in class by orienting back and forth between supportive behaviors or scaffolding techniques and practicing wait time in class and other times using achievement-oriented behavior to inspire students to achieve their goals.